Hi, and welcome once again to IV English. I'm Karen. And I'm Chris Gorski. Today is December 15th, and we have an article about something that's very cold today. That's right. We have some outdoor sporting activities, and it's not something that I've personally taken part in. And maybe it sounded cool when I was younger, but I don't know. It's not for me today. We take fewer risks as we get older, usually. I suppose so. I suppose so. I, I'm living evidence of that, I guess. <laughs> So our topic today is the thrills and chills of ice climbing. Not just climbing mountains, but climbing walls of frozen ice or frozen water, I should say. Uh, yeah. Just hearing that, I want to walk away. I'm sorry. <laughs> Both of us come from a very cold place. My, mine is probably, in theory, even colder than yours. But you're, I yeah, lived in yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was cold enough. Cold. It was yeah. cold enough. <laughs> no, I agree. You come from an even colder place, and I. I love outdoor sports in winter. I love getting out in the cold. I love going for long hikes. Ice skating. I love ice, ice skating. skating is fantastic. Camping in the snow is great. I'm not so much about ice climbing. Um, climbing is hard enough, and then when it's really slippery, yeah, it's really dangerous. Yes, it's really dangerous. I agree. You're putting a lot of trust in that into this wall of ice. I mean, I suppose there's many things you can do to ensure your safety, but I'm just not experienced in it. Yes, and you know, an image just kind of popped up in my mind、uh, from my childhood. And every winter, my father would say, "I don't know why I stayed in Minnesota." <laughs> He would say that every year, and I go, "Yeah, I don't either. Why?"、Yeah. <laughs> so I left. Excuse me. Yeah, my daughter's back there now. But anyway, one year, see. I will explain how how slippery it is. It was so slippery one day. My father had his winter boots on. I had to put rugs in front of him so that he would not slip as he was going out to the car.、Yeah. So I would he would walk over this rug and I'd move the original rug. I had two rugs and put that there so he could walk over that one. However, one time he slipped on the ice and he broke his leg. Wow! And my father is a very very strong person. You know, who sort of is always in control of everything. He has a will of steel. He got really depressed. Wow! When you can't walk, you know, and you're used to kind of running the world. He ran a business. So when I hear about you know climbing on ice, I think that part of my mind remembers that. I'm a little bit afraid of heights too. I don't have like a a terrible fear of heights, but the idea of Like even climbing in a gym, like rock climbing in a gym,、That's、being、scary. that high up, it's knowing you could fall、yeah. and those mats are very soft; they don't hurt to land on. It is there's a I don't know I get the heebie-jeebies. I get a little uncomfortable. Heebie-jeebies is just a colloquial way of just saying、really、it scares、scared. you a little bit. Yeah,、uh-huh. it's like I don't like this being up this high. And ice climbing just feels that much less secure. Yep. Okay. So now you know some of the reasons why we didn't exactly warm up to this topic. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> All right. The thrills and chills. This is also a phrase. So the thrills and chills. It reminds me of a commercial. The thrills and chills. The highs and lows. I don't know this one. I have a lot of commercials in my head, and、yeah. that's from one of them. <laughs> All right. So the thrills and chills. That means thrills are things that make you feel really excited, and that will attract you to the sport. But chills. Chills are things that make you feel uncomfortable and cold. Let's go to our article. Whether bouldering in a gym or ascending a steep mountain cliff, many thrill seekers aim to conquer new heights through sport climbing. For those climbers who want to add a new element, ice climbing is a winter variation of the sport that adds chills to the thrills. Although ice is quite a different material compared to rock. Ice climbing is similar to rock climbing in its history and practice. Both sports originated as part of mountaineering, where those who wanted to challenge mountain summits would often have to climb sheer walls and glaciers to reach their targeted peak. However, ice climbing later grew into a challenge all its own. Just like in rock climbing, sport ice climbers. Often work together in pairs, with one acting as an anchor while the other takes on the ice wall. Where ice climbing departs from other types of climbing is in the unique dangers it presents, because of the extended time spent in sub-zero temperatures, as well as the danger of avalanches and snowy weather. Ice climbers have to take extra care to shield themselves from the harsh conditions they're climbing in to ensure their safety. Warm, insulated clothing is important, including gloves and eye protection. And tools like ice axes and crampon boots are needed to make the climb safely. 
The extreme conditions often present in ice climbing make it a sport that is not for everyone. However, enthusiastic ice climbers find the chill brings a welcome challenge. If you're interested in trying out ice climbing, it's best to go with a guide. They can also bring you to some of the top climbing spots, like the frozen waterfalls of Konya, Italy, or the glaciers of Norway. Wherever you make your ascent, you can be sure that ice climbing will bring you a thrill unlike any other. Yeah, are you thrilled about being in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, from people who have lived around ice for a long time, I, I think we can't really avoid these reactions. So let's go back to the first paragraph. Whether bouldering in a gym or ascending a steep mountain cliff, many thrill seekers aim to conquer new heights through sport climbing. So the real thing here, the real attraction, is the challenge and the thrill. It's difficult. Now you said that you were fine with winter camping. Yeah, I have no problem winter camping. We like doing it. We would be either in tents or a cabin. Cabin obviously is a lot nicer. Oh, a lot than, easier. It's a lot easier. But even something like a lean-to, which is like a log cabin, a but shack. with just three walls, there the front is open and you could drape it with you know cloth to help insulate it. But yeah, I didn't mind doing any type of real outdoor activities at all.、Uh, in fact, camping in a in a tent in winter had a lot of really unique challenges, and、uh, I I never thought as a teenager I would want to be this close to my best friend's body than I than I did in that tent. Yeah, because it's you real need、cold. to warm up. Yeah, and it was a lot like making your own igloo. We would. You know, we have our tent. We'd pitch the tent once we clear a field, and then you recover your tent in snow to help shield it from the outside, and it would insulate it, and you would genuinely feel a lot warmer inside your tent than you would outside the tent. And so it was, it was a really unique challenge for me. But man,、uh, I'll tell you, you get really hot exercising really quickly, even in cold weather. That's、and、true. The idea of like climbing a mountain and having those winds blow on you while still feeling warm, it just seems. Like challenges that I am not well suited for personally. <laughs> All right, so this is another walk down memory lane. Now you already heard about my father breaking his leg. Another memory is from when I was four years old. We were sledding down the slope of the playground. The sled flipped, and the blades of <gasps> the sled oh they cut my cheeks. Oh, you had one of those. With the with the blades on the that's bottom, right? right? Wow, that's right. All right, so there we go. We got home. I got all washed up and taped up, and they said, "Oh, Karen, you look so pretty for church today." And I thought, "Does this look pretty? Why did you say that?" <laughs> <laughs> that's number two memory. Number three memory. I love to ice skate, and most of us learn how to ice skate in a place like Minnesota. I got frostbitten, so now. My extremities are always cold. You take, shake my hand, just touch my hand. Cold. <laughs> cold. Yeah. Proof. Yeah. So I got frostbitten, and now my hands and feet are always cold. So you want to talk to me about winter sports? Talk to someone else. Not a big fan. <laughs>、eh? <laughs> yeah, cold weather is really, really harsh to deal with. All right. So before we go on to our next sentence, let's look at this initial phrase. So whether bouldering in a gym or ascending a steep mountain cliff, whatever, whatever, whatever. This is a nice little phrase. Whether A or B, comma result. This is something you'll see frequently in the magazine if you're watching out for it. So this is a good one to keep in mind. Whether A or B, comma result. That's right. But it also tends to get overused. I think they teach it too much in Taiwan. You should know it, keep it in mind, and you can use it, but do not use it too much. All right, for those climbers who want to add a new element, ice climbing is a winter variation of the sport that adds chills to the thrills. So, if just climbing is not enough for you, now I say that I go mountain climbing, but of course, what I mean is I just go hiking because the places where I live they have slopes, but they are not very steep. Hiking is already—I mean, true mountain climbing is really a challenge by itself. But if that's not challenging enough for you, wow, we can make it even harder. So we'll have you climb up slick ice. That will add chills to the thrills. So thrills is excitement, and you're going to get chills. It's going to make you cold. Okay, let's move on to our next paragraph here. Although ice is quite a different material compared to rock. Ice climbing is similar to rock climbing in its history and practice. Now, practice here just means how we do it. So the the way you climb a steep 
or sheer, that means like 90 degrees sheer mountain cliff, is not really that different than when you're doing it on rock or ice. It's basically the same idea. Uh, so that's what we mean by practice here. And quite, let's be careful, this is not the word quiet. This is something, because I teach a lower level, I have kids make this mistake all the time. Like the word quiet and quite are very similar, but they're obviously really different in meaning. So pay attention when you're writing this word. And we could also say rock or stone here. Okay. Are you ready for memory number four? Yes. I I like hearing these stories. (gasps) I I don't think I enjoyed any of them myself at the time. (laughs) Okay. So I walked to school. It was about, say, a kilometer from my house, not that far. We walked in the winter. We had winter boots. Um, But as I mentioned, sometimes it gets slippery, and then sometimes the ice melts, it refreezes, and then the shape of the ice is very irregular. So I was walking over a sidewalk covered with this very irregularly shaped ice. It was still slippery. I slipped, and the ice at the place where I slipped was very, very sharp. Now, the reason I mention this is because they're comparing rock and ice. And when ice is frozen solid, it might as well be rock. So I slipped on it. I My knee hit a very, very sharp, jutting out piece of ice. And I really have the urge to bring up my knee because that scar is still there now. Wow. Wow. Ice, ice it, it, it's, he, he, here's an idea. Everybody from a cold climate needs to live in a hot climate for one year. And everybody that's from a hot climate should live in a frozen tundra climate that we're from for a year. And you'll understand. And not only understand, but you learn so much about having to live through it. I mean, it's enough to hear these stories, but to actually have to live and deal with this, to walk through the ice, to walk through knee-deep snow, it's such a unique experience. And, I mean, I think of me moving here how hot it is compared to where we're from, how much I had to change. Like I don't, I didn't dress like I do now. I mean, part of that was age, but like the, the old clothes that I used to wear were so heavy compared to what I have to wear here. <laughs> right. it, you just need a different type of lifestyle. Okay. One big change for me is I think in the summer, people complain a lot about the heat, especially since it's so humid in Taiwan. I don't know if you've ever heard me complain about the heat. Have you ever heard no, me? No, no. Never? No. I don't never. think anybody pretty much has ever heard me complain about the heat. And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you don't complain about it when you know what the alternative that's could right. be. That's right. The endless the endless Arctic cold that Gosh. never comes. All know. right. Here we go. Let's move on to our next sentence here. Both sports originated as part of mountaineering where those who wanted to challenge Mountain summits would often have to climb sheer walls and glaciers to reach their targeted peak. All I have to do is hear the word mountaineering, and I have images of Switzerland and probably those goats that can climb up very, very steep walls. Yeah, practically 90 degrees. This this word sheer I mentioned already. We have the word steep in paragraph one. That means it's very straight, but it's not like 90 degrees. It's not just a straight wall. Mm -hmm. Instead, we have this word sheer, and this is almost 90 degrees. And those goats that you mentioned can climb nearly sheer walls, which is unbelievable. They just jump up one level at a time. Mountaineering just means like climbing mountains. And the summit is the word peak. We see that later in the sentence. I personally drew a little arrow between these here, challenge mountain summits or targeted peaks. And P-E-E-K means to sneakily get a look at something. P-E-A-K is the pointed top of a mountain. However, ice climbing later grew into a challenge all its own. Just like in rock climbing, sport, no S, sport ice climbers often work together in pairs with one acting as an anchor while the other takes on the ice wall. This is, in fact, important in many sports that you have somebody working with you so that they will make sure that you stay safe and don't do something dangerous or can help you if something happens. It's often a spotter, for example, if you're doing weightlifting, for example. That's the word I had in mind. That's the exact word I had in mind. You have your spotter, somebody watching you in case something goes wrong. Now, an anchor here is someone that's especially tied to the wall so that at any given point, if you fall or if you slip, this person is connected in a safe way. so this word anchor, we are we probably best know this word from like boats. It's that big metal thing that holds the boat from drifting away too far away. And this is the person that will ensure your safety in case something goes terribly wrong. And when we say take on the wall here, this means we're climbing the wall. This especially feels challenging when you take on something difficult. 
It doesn't feel like it will be very easy. It means I accept this challenge. Okay, our third paragraph, where ice climbing departs from other types of climbing, is in the unique dangers it presents. You can slip and fall. Enough said. Because of the extended time spent in sub-zero temperatures, as well as the danger of avalanches and snowy weather, ice climbers have to take extra care to shield themselves from the harsh conditions they're climbing in. To ensure their safety, so in addition to just making sure you don't fall off the mountain, you have to make sure that you stay warm enough that your equipment is right for grabbing onto very slippery surfaces. For example, also here's another weird thing about living in cold climates: if you're doing vigorous exercise outdoors, you're going to get hot really quickly. But there's a danger here because. Your body is building a lot of heat. Like I said, I did a lot of outdoor camping, and you need to chop wood. And this is a very vigorous activity. You're going to be sweating fast, even if it's very cold out. You're going to start to sweat. So you'll open your coat and you'll start exposing part of your body to these very strong winds, and you can very quickly lose your heat. So it's important to know how to layer yourself to take certain layers off. And then, as your temperature drops quickly, you can relayer and maintain your worth because it's very easy to go from "I'm sweating" to "I'm in big trouble." And you need to be able to judge that very carefully. And it's a very tricky balance. I can only imagine how much harder it is while you're on a mountain with no way of protecting yourself. That's right. And also, when you're out in the cold, maintaining your body heat eats up lots and lots of calories. So people who、um, do dog sledding. They actually eat whole sticks of butter just to get enough calories、wow. to keep going. Okay, let's continue. Warm insulated clothing is important, including gloves and eye protection, and tools like ice axes and crampon boots are needed to make the climb safely. These are examples of the kinds of equipment. And by the way, equipment is uncountable. Don't say equipments. It's not equipments. It's pieces of equipment. So these are examples of the pieces of equipment you need to bring. So first of all, you need. Definitely the right kind of gloves. You need to protect your eyes when you go out in really cold weather. What happens to your eyes and your nose? Yeah, you get those little frozen.、Uh, especially when you walk out and you get like the sun blindness, and then it's really bright from the snow, and then you start、uh, tearing up, and then the tears freeze on freeze. your face. Yes, even though they're salty, they、yeah. still freeze. So you've got frozen eyelashes, and how about inside your nose? Uh, well, I'm always I always have a really runny nose, so it's a little、oh, easier for、tell. me. But yes, I, I, my sister complains of this because when we would go to school, we'd walk to school. She had this problem. Luckily for me, maybe the only time in my life I always have a runny nose, so I was always <laughs> well cleared. <laughs> because what we're talking about is the boogers in your nose freeze. Yes. So you're breathing in. And you can feel there are solid pieces inside your nose, and it's a really odd feeling. When my wife lived in Buffalo with me for a short time, one thing that she noticed is when you go outside, I would tell her take a deep breath just to feel this, to experience this. And so you go outside on a really cold day and take a deep breath, and your body's like, "Wow, that feels weird. Yeah, it, it feels really, really uncomfortable to have that cold air in your lungs." It really does, and so you need ice axes. You need to be able to smash the ice in order to make it passable. Otherwise, it's just too slick. Crampon boots are boots that have these clamps at the bottom that can clamp onto the ice. They look like big eagle claws. Yeah, right. Okay, our next sentence: the extreme conditions often present in ice climbing make it a sport that is not for everyone. The first time I read this sentence, I had an ng. What did I say? The extreme conditions often. Oh,、uh, present. Present. Yeah, <laughs> which is I, which I in, immediately mimicked, not to mock you.、Uh, I was thinking, I was like, I hope that doesn't come off rude. When I was growing up in school, kids would try to say this word funnily because you had to say present when the teacher asked if you were here or not. Yeah. So you're always look, looking to screw with the teacher. So kids would be like <laughs> present or president. We would say anything but present. You said it, and as an instinct, I was just like present. <laughs> it brought you back to that time as a kid. Just it was reflexive. That's right. I was expecting a verb, and if you don't look further, a verb would be fine. The extreme conditions often present problems for the climbers, but、right. that's not what came next. Are often present. They often,、uh, which are often present in ice climbing, make it a sport that is not for everyone. You know, we have a state in the U.S. with a very small population. And the weather is not wonderful. It's Nebraska. Nebraska. Oh yeah. 
and their slogan is, it's not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next sentence. However, enthusiastic ice climbers find the chill brings a welcome challenge. Welcome for certain people. Yeah, and, and something to do in winter. Honestly, one of the downsides of living in a really cold climate is that you'll have a lot of people that don't want to do anything. They just want to hang out and watch TV yeah. and get fat. Yeah. And like having a person that wants to do outdoor stuff is really it's a, to to have something to do in those cold winter months that last so long is really a nice change of pace especially after christmas mm. when winter really does start to drag that's right and then i think it's just part of our dna you know it's going to be cold actually we have winter about 8 months of the year in minnesota that's right. that's sometimes right. 9 yeah so you can't just hang around at home all the time it just becomes a natural thing that you have to go out and do some kind of winter sport that's right at the end of august the weather's already turning cold all right let's continue to our final paragraph if you're interested in trying out ice climbing it's best to go with a guide yeah have especially when you're new who knows what they're doing they can also bring you to some of the top climbing spots like the frozen waterfalls of Konya, Italy, or the glaciers of Norway, if you have money, I guess. Yeah. Why do you have to go so far? It's very easy to find unpleasant cold weather. <laughs> yeah, and, and cheap places to fly, too. <laughs> yeah. Wherever you make your ascent, that means your climb, you can be sure that ice climbing will bring you a thrill unlike any other, which I do agree with, even if I'm not particularly excited to climb ice walls. Thank goodness it's not like any other. That means the other thrills will probably be more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it reminds me of an expression we have in English. If somebody asks you how you like something, you say, oh, it's different. Okay, you're in Minnesota. You're at the top of a hill. The kids have a sled. Are you going down at least once? Sure. Oh, yeah, I'd love sledding. Oh, sure. Love sledding. Yeah. <laughs> love sledding. <laughs> Why okay. not? Dogs do it. <laughs> <laughs> they will get on a piece of cardboard or a sled and they they'll will have a great time. You hold and your dog bring and go it, with you. They'll bring it back up the hill by themselves and slide down again. Yeah, that's always the drag is, is, dra is pulling your slide all the way back up. That is the drag. They seem to enjoy that as much as coming down. <laughs> we have a few questions for you. Number one, in what ways do ice and rock climbing differ? A, in the origins of the sport. No, yeah. they're, they're the same. B, in the gear they require. Don't forget we don't say equipments. C, right. In the objective of the sports. No, yep. go go to the top. D, in the way the sports are practiced. No. Mm -hmm. E, in the weather conditions they involve. I mean, you could climb rock in the, in the ice. But that's how they differ, definitely. And F, in the roles of the climbers of the sports. Well, the answers are B, in the gear they require. You do require special gear for climbing on ice mountains on ice walls, and also E, the weather conditions they involve are quite different. Okay, number two. Number two, according to the passage, ice climbers have to be equipped with warm and well-insulated clothing, which include gloves and blank, blank eyewear. Blank eyewear. Of course, you need to protect your eyes, so the adjective of protect is protective. Gloves and protective eyewear. Moreover, essential equipment such as ice axes and crampon boots must be utilized to guarantee a blank climb. Of course, you want to stay safe, S-A-F-E. That's the answer. And number three, please identify the two words in the passage that are synonyms of climbing and climb, respectively. And the answers are ascending and, and ascent. And that's it for today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.